Hello, we're here with Representative John Campbell. Representative, thank you so much for taking from your busy schedule on session to come out and give us this interview. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Well, first of all, I would like to know briefly, how did you got involved in politics? Well, my, my father was a, a lifelong state representative from the same district I'm serving now. And we had, a, had a, come to an agreement, not really an agreement, but a decision that I would fill his vacancy because this was going to be his last session. And unfortunately, he died two days after the general election this year. So circumstances changed, and, and you know, I sat down with the family and and the people that needed to be involved, stakeholders, and in, in the decision of me running. You know, we sat down and and decided that it would be a good thing. So ran in a special election on uh, December 14th of 2010, and was honored that the, the people of House District 44 elected me to succeed my father. Well, that is wonderful to know. Now, we noticed that you are part of the Hispanic Republican Conference. Can you tell us why did you decide to join this conference? Uh, I'm a very proud part of it. Coming from House District 44, which is made up of Gonzales, Guadalupe, and Wilson counties, the uh, percentage of Hispanics in that district is close to 40%. So it's a, it's, a, it's a big part. I'm born and raised in Seguin. I've been there for six generations. Our sons are, are seventh generation Seguinites, so we've been there a long time. And saying that, growing up in a, a community with so many Hispanics, I, I grew up in the, you know, some of my best friends in the world. Uh, so I never really think of it as being a race thing. It's just my neighbors. And, I know that's important, and, and what we bring up here from that district is, is good conservative family values, hard working, uh, less government, the, the kind of things that, you know, the, the religious approach, but just what it comes down to is conservative family values, and everybody in that house district agrees with that. You know, Mr. Campbell, one of the things that I do with Voices Action, my organization, is that I educate and empower the Latino community with conservative fiscal and moral values. But I use the Spanish a lot to go in the media and to interact with those Hispanics who still speak Spanish. We do encourage the people to learn English, but we still use Spanish. And I just learned a few minutes ago that you speak Spanish. What uh, can you say to those people who speak Spanish and also about if you believe Spanish is a tool to outreach to the Hispanic community so they can understand the conservative values of the Republican Party? There's still people in my district that are challenged with English and understand, obviously understand Spanish a lot better, but that's just a conduit to them. Their values are still the same, whether it be morally or your conservative-based values. If we just have to use the conduit as, as a language, we need to approach them in Spanish as well. But, you know, more times than not, uh, they're going to agree with us and agree with our conservative stances. It, it's helped me a lot in my district. That's right. Now tell us about the people in your district. What are the issues that they are concerned with? Well, I think statewide, quite obviously, it's the budget deficit this year. Uh, they're concerned about public ed, health care, and those are those are the ones I, I hear repeatedly over and over again. And we're, like I said, you know, passing HB1, so it's a good first step in getting it to the, the conference committee where we can take a conservative approach to it. But in the end, you know, our priorities, my priorities on the budget will be will be children uh, and, and health care, making, you know, the truly indigent, those people are taken care of. Now, well, I know that I'm, uh, I am aware that there are some issues that they seem to be a little bit controversial, but it's important to listen to state representatives' positions on the issue. And gambling is one of them. Gambling in Texas is a controversial issue. On one hand, potential state revenue is being lost to neighboring states. But on the other hand, many Texans are opposed to gambling in Texas. What are your views on this? Well, right now, what I and I serve on the licensing committee, so we've overheard all the gambling, uh, the, all the bills and the testimonies on, for, and against gambling. But, you know, consistently here that in a statewide poll, 80% of Texans want the right to vote on it, whether it be for or against. So what better way to represent the state than passing a constitutional amendment and maybe sending it to a ballot in November to give, to give people the, their, 
right to vote, like I said, for or against it. And, you know, we are, the state is losing a lot of money to the bordering states, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Louisiana. And you'll see as much as four, up to four billion dollars a year. And, you know, that's, when you, when you look at it, that's money we can keep at home. And not only just from gambling revenue, then you can you think about subsidiary revenues as uh, food sales, more income tax, because it creates some more jobs. And I think that the footprint that, that gambling would provide would, would, be a, would be a good way to, to raise revenue in the state. And then there's, you know, it, it comes down to existing footprints of gambling already or destination destination casinos and places like that. And that's debate we'll have on the floor. But I think when it comes down to it, giving the people the right to vote on it is the right thing to do. And can you give me also some of your thoughts about how do you think we can resolve the problem of illegal immigration? Well, illegal immigration, it's just a, a matter of, the, of securing our borders. Uh, I understand that once we can do that, it, I know Governor Perry was very involved in, in doing that, but you know our borders are so controversial right now. It's really, I'm not so far south, but I consistently have conversations with some of the members that represent uh, border districts, and it's really terrifying to hear, especially driven by the drug trade coming over. So that's a number one concern. And make sure we cannot let that cross the border. Um, so we'll we'll take that approach. It's a new issue that we've. You know, we've seen realize itself in the last two or three years, but it's it's turning out to be a dire situation that we need to address. Well, I want to say that I want to thank you for serving the people of your district, and also thank you for serving the people of Texas. Thank you. Thank very you much. so much. Thank you.